And Kasten will receive to start the night off. Yarber and Yaden at the back of the receiving team. And number 26, Caden Herrera to kick off for the Cavaliers. Fielded by Yarber, just inside the 20. Spins free for a gain of around eight. And homecoming 2023 is underway. First look here for the casting Commons offense led by quarterback Gavin Molenkoff, the sophomore. And that's one thing that I just have to keep pointing out. This is a relatively young Comets team. So the fact that they're starting to put things together, even after kind of a little bit of a rough season, it just bodes well for the future of cast and football. Yeah, absolutely. Getting all these young guys experience is definitely going to pay off in the long run. We might see next year, or maybe even two years from now, uh, this common team put together consistent wins, and we can only hope for that. Outside handoff to Kyle Routebush. Looks like he put a couple on there. That'll put them in a second and seven on their own 37 yard line, 38 yard line. Molenkoff under center for the second play of the game. Landon Rigney in motion, another pitch handoff. Oh, and tackled well behind the line of scrimmage. So Collins will move back three yards and they'll uh, try to convert here on third and ten. Bolenkoff once again under center. Another motion and a double handoff to Grant Yade, and he stumbles but picks it up. He's down, and I think that might be enough for a first down, and it is. First down, Comets move the chains, and the first third down completion for the Comets comes on their opening drive. Be honest, I... Uh... I wasn't sure that the referee wasn't going to make him go for fourth and inches. Molenkoff under, under center for the third time in a row. Another motion and another pitch. Routebush cuts inside. Get a gain of around two on this one. And that was a hard fought two yards. Comets running a bit more pitch plays. We haven't really seen that uh, earlier in the season, but the Comets, uh, earlier in the season, they've started to get more and more out wide trying to run the ball 
um, trying to get out outside the hashes before trying to cut it back up inside the field. Um, and we've seen it work work pretty well today. We've had um, Grant Yaden get that first down completion on an outside pitch, and they get two yards again. Yarber, another outside run. He's got blockers He's at got the a field. Hole. He's definitely moving the chains. Oh, and taken down hard at the Cavaliers' 40. He popped right back up, though, so. Absolutely, the toughness from Yarber uh, really has been in effect all season. We've seen him take big hicks, but get up like it's nothing and continue to play. So once again, another first down for the Comets. They're moving the ball right down the field, and they are now in Cavs' territory. Three minutes gone in the quarter. Molenkoff from the gun, drops back to throw. Pressure up the middle. He's going to try to keep it. He Cuts found a hole. Field. And he manages some pot of positive yardage there. Making something out of nothing seemingly. He had a guy come right up the middle. I believe that was the middle linebacker. But Molenkoff able to stay composed and just pick up positive yardage. Just under eight minutes, 30 seconds left in this opening quarter. Comets on the 37 yard line. Molenkoff outside to Yarber. Yarber slips. Once again, Comets had a hole there, but Yarber unable to make anything with that one. Oh, they're going to call that as lost yardage. Thought he had made it back to the line at least. Comets another third and ten situation. They've already picked up one third and ten on this opening drive. See if they can do it again. Molenkoff back to throw. And he's and, oh, sacked. Fourth and a mile now. The Comets are going to punt this one away. Levi Martin to send it away. Well, not the way we wanted this opening drive to end, uh, but a lot of good scene there. Uh, one thing that's going to have to get shorn up as the game wears on is this offensive line. That one's blocked. Yaden to recover. Oh, and there's a flag. That field must be a lot more slippery than I would have thought because we keep seeing players losing their footing out there. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to see what this call is. Yeah, the flag is on the near side. I haven't heard any explanation given for that flag. Not yet, anyway. We got two wide receivers out wide. And an outside run to cut up the field. And a clutch tackle there by the Comets. Another flag on the field. Number 12, Jack Rogers, the ball carrier. There is a flag on the play. I can sell over there. I'm just playing around, kind of throwing out the middle of the play. Referees still discussing this call. We'll have holding on the offense. So take back that positive yardage run, and the ball will be moved back. That's the call I was expecting. We heard some chatting up in the booth that it might have been a late hit out of bounds, but ball was moved back five yards, and we'll, we will replay first down. First and 15 now. The ball on the Comets 44-yard line.
Cavs with the same offensive look, and they're going to run it right up the middle here. And Kyle Routebush with the tackle from behind. Once again, ball in the hands of number 12, Jack Rogers. Rogers, the ball carrier. Tackled by number 72, Petrie Duvall. Pete Duvall with that tackle. It looks like we are at a second and 14 situation for the Cavaliers. This is a widespread look here for the Cavs. Back in the hands of Rodgers. And absolutely blown up by a crew of Comets. Radebush's helmet comes off, so have to sub out for a play. That was just a bad look on the part of the Cavaliers quarterback to put it in the hands of Rodgers right in front of that many defenders. And that's the thing the Comets have been looking to do all this game is just try to rush that defensive Try to, excuse me, try to rush that offensive line, pressure the quarterback, and get after the runners. And that play uh, proves dividend there for that common stop. Culver now third in a parking lot. Quarterback rolls out right, throws. Deep throw. That one incomplete. Seems he had it for a second, but not able to hold on. Great defense there by the freshman Landon Rigney. He's seen more field time as this season's gone on, and we've seen him in a consistent role here on the defensive side of the ball. That's always nice to see uh, a couple of these young guys getting more playing time. Rigney is, has just been quick all through his junior high career. Uh, runs track and field in the spring. Uh, clutch sprinter for the Comets, and uh, he's tough. And it's showing out here. Absolutely. Yarber back to receive a high kick. That one's got a little bit of front spin on it, but not a lot there. Looks like it'll stop at about the 16-yard line. So great work there by the Comets defense in the second look for the casting Comets offense here. Just over half of the first quarter gone. Comets now with a lot harder field position. Again, that offensive line just going to have to get a little bit more solid, give Mollenkopf some more time in the pocket. Absolutely. He's been great trying to create time for himself. But look at this. Landon Rigney off to the races by great blocking from that offensive line. Fantastic. Big first down for the Comets. Rigney moving up past the 40-yard line before going out of bounds. I guess we ought to be quiet now because that offense just displayed some quite impressive blocking there by the, men's in the, by the men in the trenches there. Once again, going back to Rigney, his quickness is just, it's such an advantage when coming to these sweet motions in football. You give it to him, he can get out wide and he can pretty much outrun anyone. Well, and the 100 and the 200 are his events, so... <laughs> Perfect fit for the football field. Absolutely. Rigney. Yarber firing. An absolute he can amazing go block. He, he's going to go all the way. He's going. He's in the end zone. He's in the end zone. Jabez Yarber, huge touchdown for the Comets. That is a absolutely great play call. If you guys go back and watch that play, you'll see Levi Martin absolutely lays the hammer on that offensive block, and Yarber able to explode out of the hole, take it all the way to the end zone. Great play call there by Coach Ulrich. If the line's lined up on the left side, you run up the right, and you're going to see a giant hole all, all day. Sophomore Yarber takes it in for six, and the Comets are on the board first. Feels good to say that. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. And... Comet's going for two here, Molenkoff from the gun. I would expect another run here. And it is outside sweep to Rigney, and he's in for two. 8 0 Comets. All right, well, just under five minutes left to play here in the first quarter, and the Comets coming out strong. Eight on the board. We'll be back after these words from our sponsors. You're watching Cast and Comets Football at Homecoming here on RTC TV4. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. 
Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. Crest Senior Living Community in North Manchester offers services for all stages of life, including independent living, where you can maintain your independence, assisted living in an environment that will suit your individual needs, nursing and memory care for those in need of full-time care. Licensed professionals provide rehabilitation services, including physical and occupational therapy. Call to schedule a visit at Timbercrest, a place to call home. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Comets with the football on the tee. Looking to kick off. And we've got uh, number 12, Jack Rogers, back deep to receive all by himself. Of course, he has been the primary runner for the Cavaliers in their drive that they had earlier. Molenkopf sends it away. This one, the short kick. Fielded at the 31. Ooh. That one's out of bounded around the 30, excuse me, around the 43 yard line. So second offensive drive coming up here for the Cavaliers. First drive, they made a couple first downs but stopped at around uh, midfield and they had to punt that one away and the Comets obviously taking advantage of that one, running it in for six and a two point conversion on top of that. Yeah, and that last comments drive was put together by some of those big moments. Uh, and I, again, something I hope that the guys don't do is just get so focused on those big moments that they forget the incremental movement forward. Yeah. Ball carrier this time for the Cavaliers was number 42, uh, Ethan Binion. And once again, that, that field's got to be a little wetter uh, than I would have anticipated. We did have a lot of rain this week. Uh, I know that they weren't able to paint the field until today uh, because there's been so much water this week. So uh, seeing guys slipping and sliding out there. Yeah, great for the farmers, but not so much for football. <laughs> well, this part of the season, I'm sure the farmers are like, okay, let's go ahead and just shut it off. We'll get the corn in. <laughs> All right, and there's Jack Rogers again, manages to break two or three tackles, carries a host of comments, spins out of Three tackles. Uh, credit where credit's due. Moving the chains for the Cavaliers. Yeah, Comets evenly had him wrapped up there, but it would spin out of it, keep churning those legs, and moves the chains there for the Cavs. Lesson to be learned there for the uh, Comets is don't count him down until he is on the ground. Yeah, that's one of the things with football. Like, you always want to pressure uh, the quarterback and um, the running back, but at the same time, you don't want to go so hard that you end up blowing yourself up and they can just take it all the way. Yeah, flag on that play came from behind the defensive line. Not sure if we've got a false start holding. What happened there? That would be an offside. Excuse oh. me, uh, false start in the offense there. I don't know where my head was on that one. <laughs> Neutral zone infraction that covers both sides. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so first and 15. Cavaliers, first and 15. Got a receiver out wide, and the other side is in trips formation. Rogers and, once and again, a ball is popped loose. and caught by Yarber. Heads up play there by the sophomore, and the Comets regain possession. The reaction time to see that ball in the air and make a play on it. Phenomenal. Absolutely. I mean, there's a little bit of that that's right place at the right time, but seeing it loose and just lining up under it, bringing it into the basket. Perfect play by Jabez Jarber. Yeah, absolutely. And those helmets can be kind of hard to see out of sometimes, especially things that are right above your head. But just being in the moment, being able to make a play, uh, phenomenal job by Jarber there. And Comets' third offensive drive coming up. 
Well, if we keep talking positive about Jabez like this, he's going to need a new helmet because his head's going to be so inflated it won't fit. <laughs> Kyle Radebush right up the middle. Gain of around four there. Positive running yards. Jabez did say he goes home after the game and watches the replay. <laughs> so <laughs> he's definitely, definitely going to have a big head after this one. So far in this game, though, three minutes to go in the first, and he's earning it. Yeah, absolutely. He's made some tremendous plays on both sides of the ball for the Comets and uh, leading the game, hopefully trying to put another one in here. Ooh. Low snap, Molenkoff gets out wide, throws. It's caught. Oh, my Grant goodness. Yaden. Grant Yaden down. Oh. oh. He tried to cut it back there, but possibly could have just took it all the way. Well, he is well inside. The red zone there. And that's just all created there by Molenkopf. Seemingly has a guy that he's just trying to get out of a tackle. I'm trying to present us trying to prevent a sack. Scrambles out, sees Yaden, the senior wide open, throws tremendous pass, and that one's caught and brought down inside the ten yard line. Molenkopf making it happen. Two thirty to go in the first. Comets first and goal on the eight. Here we go. Motion, Yarber cutting up, touchdown. And he's back in the end zone. There's another highlight for him. He's played phenomenal already this game. Comets up double digits in the first quarter. We don't see that often, but it's definitely a sight to see here tonight. This offensive line has just played so well, blocking up field. Um, Really getting up to the linebackers, blocking them, creating running room for Rigney, um, for Yaden, for Molenkoff, for Yarbra, as we saw there. And we're going to have a PAT attempt here by Molenkoff. Well, and there's something to be said for that. The Comets have so many weapons out there now. Kick is up. And it's, and it's good. good. How about this offensive display here by the Comets? Two out of three on their opening drives. Fantastic, and just over two minutes yet to play in the first quarter. We're going to step away and thank our sponsors. Stay tuned for more Cast and Comments football here on RTC TV 4. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. Say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by the local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrientagsolutions.com to see how Nutrient can help you. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Comments once again teeing up a kickoff. Jack Rogers back deep to receive. Of course, Molenkoff last kickoff kept it out of the hands of Rodgers. We'll see where he puts it this time. Molenkoff sends it away. This one's a laser. Caught at around the 17-yard line. Cut up field, brought down by Chase Engett. And um, Jabez Yarber again. Cavaliers taking possession on their own 32. We're all but at the two minute warning here in the first quarter. Comets blitzing here, drops back to throw. And, and a phenomenal that, catch there. Pass complete. That was Ryan Beam, the senior. Great concentration and a big pickup there. Yeah, about a 20 yard pass there. 
Yarber right with him, brings him down right at the moment of reception, prevents any additional positive yardage. Pass thrown there by Ethan uh, Binion there. And uh, first and 10 here for Culver. In Comets territory now at the 40 yard line. Two receivers out wide and one on the opposite side. We got a run up the middle. Great, great read there by uh, Brody Brewer. Just wraps Rogers up at the waist, spins him down, puts yep. him on the ground. Absolutely, another one of these big freshmen uh, taking advantage there, being able to read the gap and explode through it, make a play. Cavaliers second and eight on the Comets, 38. 15 seconds on the play clock. <clears throat> 60 seconds on the game clock now for the from first the, quarter. From the gun, Josh back to throw a curl route. Just phenomenal execution there. Grant Yaden helps him bring down there. That's one of the routes that we don't see too much um, in, in the pros in college at high school, but the curl route is works so well against man coverage, just being able to turn around, wait for the ball, let the ball come to you. Um, it's it's a great route if you run it right, and Cobra does a phenomenal job running that one there. Yeah, it looked good. Third and one on the 31. 23 seconds left here in the first quarter. Oh, and a flag there on uh, Comets number 65. Cameron McFatridge got psyched out on the count violates the neutral zone. And that will be a Culver first down. Don't see that too much on the Comets defensive side, but um, just being able to watch the ball, that's one of the one of the basics that sometimes players just forget about. It happens, and um, first down here for Culver. Yeah, you don't want to do that too often. Well, that will wrap up the first quarter 15 nothing cast an advantage going into the second. You're watching cast and homecoming football here on RTC TV4. We'll be right back. County Fiber is bringing the residents of rural Marshall County dependable high-speed internet. Through the partnership between Marshall County REMC and RTC Fiber Communications, Marshall County Fiber is striving to bring internet access to even the most remote areas of Marshall County. Stop online at www.marshallfiber.com or call in at 574-223-2191 to see if fiber is available for you. Evans Agency is here to match you with the best insurance solutions that fit your needs. Whether you need coverage for home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency will make sure you have the protection you need no matter what life throws your way. With a heart and a hand for friendship, Evans Agency is here for you. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Going into the second with Culver at first and 10 on the Comets 26. Culver down a pair of touchdowns, a two-point conversion, and a PAT right now. Outside handoff here. Levi Martin tries to get outside. Rodgers manages to move the chains, brought down in the red zone. Looks like by Jabez Yarber, I believe. Yeah, with the Comets applying so much pressure up the middle, you're going to see more outside runs here by the Cavs. Just try to counter that. So the Comets um, being up two touchdowns, you might want to think about uh, not playing so much pressure and more thinking about just covering all spots of the field. Culver now only 13 yards from putting a score on the board. Quarterback keeper on the outside, blown up by Kyle Radebush, the senior. That was that was a big hit. Absolute hammer there. 
I don't know, did he get back to the line of scrimmage? Looks like that's where they're putting the yard marker. Second and 10 from the 13. And Culver's QB will probably think twice about keeping it from now on. Roll out right, pressure thrown deep. Yarber, fantastic, playing the ball and getting the incompletion. That's one of the things you see a lot of younger guys. When they're one-on-one -on, -one on an out route, you almost think like, I gotta, pl I gotta play the man. But Yarber, the poise and the confidence just to say, I, I just need to hit this ball down for an incompletion. I don't have to worry about touching them. I'm just going to smack this ball down. He does it right there. Right play. Manages to put them in a third and 10 situation. Still at 13. Yeah, you would think if they don't manage to pick this one up, they're going to go ahead and try to go for it. Comets. Once again, phenomenal stop there by the defensive line. And interesting luck here for Culver. Well, that looks like a loss of a yard. Looks like they're gonna go for this one. I don't see how you don't, not that close. Mm -hmm, absolutely, being down the red zone. Um, it's always nice to come away with points here. Looks like you're gonna try to do it on this drive. Drops back, launches toward the end zone. Manier, that's it. That might be an interception. They are calling it incomplete. Culver players not happy with that result. I think they were looking for uh, pass interference. That's another freshman for this Comets offense, making great plays on defense. That was Gage Manier. Uh, number 20 for the Comets, and phenomenal stop here, and another offensive look here for the Comets. Glad to see Maneer on the field. Uh, last home game, uh, he got blindsided and actually had some bruising to his collarbone. Uh, there was a little bit of fear as he left the field that he might have rebroken a collarbone that he broke last year. Um, fortunately, since part of it's titanium now, he <laughs> didn't break, but... He was out for a week. Yeah, he's been through the ringer in terms of energy. And Jarber finding energies. a hole. And I might need to hold my tongue here as Jarber takes it down the sideline. It's a foot race and he's brought down. Another huge play for Jabez Jarber. Ethan Binion again. Not able to quite break away from the Cavaliers, but definitely able to go deep into Cavs territory as the ball is gonna be spotted at the 34 yard line. Yep, yeah, comments have something cooking on this drive and back to what I was saying, Gage Manier, he's been through the ringer in terms of sports injuries, but he's one of the toughest kids I've seen in terms of sports. He gets out there and even though, even though he's, he's having a, a passive injury, he goes out there and plays his heart out every week. Oh yeah, he doesn't know the word, meaning of the word quit. Uh, football, wrestling, he just goes hard. Absolutely, Chase Ang, get up the middle. Could have drove a truck through that hole and the Comets looking like might have another first down. I think they're, I think they're a yard short. Got a, got a couple substitutions here. Levi Martin comes out. Looks like he's got a bloody nose, but in come Cameron McFatridge to, black, to back him up here. I, I, it looked like there was a cheap shot after that last play, but and flag on the play. The so false start on the comments. So they're going to back him up and replay the down. Comet second and six from the 30. Nine and a half minutes left in the half.
Monkoff back to throw. A high lob pass. Yate and it's caught. Touchdown, Comets. <laughs> Comets third visit to the end zone in four series. 75% completion rate in terms of touchdowns for this Comets squad. Where was this offense at the start of the season? You know, here's the thing. You put a cake in the oven, you got to give it time to bake. The 0-6 that we've come into tonight with, that was our time in the oven, Gage. Yeah. Talked to uh, Coach Kinzer before the game tonight, and he had pointed out every opponent we've faced up to this point has been ranked and were, was a top 12 team. Kick is no good. Um, but, yeah, so... All we have played to this point in our season are ranked teams. It's, it's just been the crucible, and it has toughened these guys up. Yeah. Well, with 9 minutes and 14 seconds left in the half, we're going to step away and thank our sponsors after the Comets take it to a 21 nothing lead. You're watching Cast and Comets Football here on RTC TV4. Looking for a new set of wheels to get you from point A to point B? Mike Anderson in Rochester has exactly what you need to get you where you need to go. Whether you're looking for a new vehicle or a used one with great gas mileage, Mike Anderson in Rochester will be sure to fit you with your new dream ride. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-498-2626 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Pay your electric bill the easy way using the Smart Hub app. Through the partnership between Fulton County REMC and Smart Hub, you are able to create an account to easily make payments and keep track of your energy usage all through your phone. Simply download the Smart Hub app, search for Fulton County REMC, and create your Smart Hub account to start making easier payments today. For more info about this service from Fulton County REMC, call 574 223 3156 or visit www.fultoncountyremc.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mollenkoff once again lined up to kick off for the Comets. Oh, onside. Onside kick there. Levi Martin recovers. Dangerous and aggressive play here. But, but the Comets steal possession. <clears throat> I wasn't looking for that. Me neither. That was... That was a gutsy play call there, but Comets, it pays off. And obviously the Cavs weren't looking for that either. Yeah, this Comets squad, in terms of special teams and offense, have, have just been 100% today. Um, and it, play, it, pays div it plays dividend right there. Still possession, first and 10 Comets, just inside midfield, and here we go. Yarber cuts up field. That He's was got a, a nice gap. juke. He's going to move the chains. Stiff arm hits a man, and he's down the sideline. Yarber oh, takes he's gonna it. He's going to go away again. Jabez Yarber, unstoppable here tonight. You can see he's been in the weight room. We thought he had him down. Stiff arms, and then lowers his shoulder and just explodes right through the safeties and takes it all the way to the end zone. I mean, Yarber listed on the roster as 170, and that hit looked like one that would have stood up a man half again that size, and he just went and kept going. Yeah, absolutely. Probably would have had me with that one as well, and that one just short. Oh, no, they're calling it good. It was between the uprights. I'll yeah. hold my tongue and put a point on the board. Casting up 28 nothing. What a quick. There wasn't even 10 seconds off the clock with that whole series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we are going to say thank you to our sponsors. This is Cast and Comets Football from a huge home homecoming night here at the Comet Crater, coming to you live on RTC TV4. Been with Alliance Bank since late 80s, early 90s. Worked with them on a, a new shop. They've always been competitive on any of the rates that uh, we've looked at for any financing. But I think the main key ingredient that we've stayed with Alliance Bank 
is because of their willingness and understanding of today's farming industry. My name's Brad Carpenter. The name of our farm is Lazy Sea Incorporated. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We won't run two commercials there because we've already run more commercial than we had playtime on that last series. <laughs> Incredible onside kick into a huge, huge rush by uh, Jabez Jarber that culminated down in the end zone. Now, surely they won't do two of those in a row. <laughs> yeah, onside kicks mostly seen as a fourth quarter situation. We're down by points, but Comets just looking to try to keep the offensive side of the ball moving, keep the momentum on their side, and it pays off there. And Molenkoff is going to kick it away for real this time. And that'll We're be a kick a out of bounds. We're going to have a flag as it goes out of bounds. That'll be a kick out of bounds there on Molenkoff, and the ball will be moved up. But nonetheless, this Comets offense have just played phenomenal tonight. So the ball will find its way to the 35-yard line after the penalty is assessed. Comets now just one TD away from taking us to a running clock second half. Yeah, those boys were confident coming into this game, but if you would have told them they would have been up by by 28 points and not even at halftime, I think they would have been pretty ecstatic. And Molenkoff misses the tackle there. They're going to run him out of bounds, though, at the chains. Somebody check on the chain gang. We might have a concussion there. Yeah, Molenkoff had him in the backfield, but um, great run in there and able to get back to the chains. So second and 10 upcoming here for the Culver Cavs. All right, just over eight minutes left. We're gonna try to run it up the middle. Rogers caught and tackled for another loss. There is that pressure we've been seeing all night. Comets just playing so aggressively on the defensive side of the ball. Those linebackers, they sent everyone to the front and got to stop. You really only see that on um, goal line situations, but the Comets just so confident in their in their defense be able to make these stops, and they just keep on running it. Well, and they've got six weeks of pent-up frustration that they are just taking out on this Cavaliers team. From the gun now, back to throw. That's a spiral high arcing yeah. pass and a late flag there, and you can only assume that's gonna be P.I. on Gage Manier. Not a lot of hands there, but uh, I do believe he stopped the receiver's forward progress, and that will be a first down. You could see the ref was thinking about that one, and uh, turns out it will be a P.I. Well, that has to be a little bit frustrating for Manier. His whole concept there was prevent the first down, and instead he caused it. Oh, once again, ball in the hands of uh, Rogers, and it gets stopped. The referees will blow it dead before anybody gets hurt. They are going to put the football back at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Cavaliers right at midfield. Another gun look, back to throw, quick. Quick uh, pass out there to the flat route. That's Kyle Routabush preventing that from being a bigger play than it was, and it was already enough to move those chains. 
That's again one of those routes that we don't see too much, but when used right, they can they can be so deadly. It's just those flat routes out to the side. You're not cutting up field. You're just getting out wide and hopefully trying to make a play one on one. We see it there. Castens uh, used that very same play to their advantage uh, in a couple of home games earlier in the season. Ten seconds on the play clock. Cavaliers back to the line. And I believe we're going to have another neutral zone infraction here. Is that false start against the offense? It will be. First and 15. Ball now on the Comets, 41. Half of the second. Gage, there's still half of the second quarter to play. There's been so much football already in the second quarter. All sorts of time High back in the pass. pocket. High arcing pass. A lot of contact there, but no flag comes out. It was possibly more contact on that one than the Meneer penalty, but uh, nonetheless, it's a stop for the Comets. We're going to have a deep third and ten situation upcoming. I hate to correct you, Gage, but yeah. this is second and 15. I was waiting on for, for the... Well, I'm just wanting you to stay in your lane. I'm the guy. I'm the guy who messes up the yardage and stuff. You're the guy who knows football. I'm the guy who's not even a pretty face. <laughs> oh, we're going to use a timeout here, so we're going to step away and thank our sponsors. You're watching Cast and Comments Football from the homecoming here at the Comet Creator on RTC TV 4. Coming here to Woodlawn with my third pregnancy, um, my other two pregnancies I had been elsewhere and coming here was a completely different experience. I truly never felt cared for before and from the moment I had my first OB appointment I knew it was going to be different. Um, he really cared, the nurses really cared, um, everyone just really cared about my baby, me, making me comfortable. It was great. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The guys are taken back to the field after that Culver timeout. Second and 15 now. Another drop back gun look. Pressure. Well, that's a good pass, a but order. it is just a little too long. That was right on line. We got a flag out, though, but that was right on the line. Just a little bit too far out. Those, those throws are extremely difficult to make when you're under pressure, uh, let, alone, let alone when there's no pressure. But we got a flag on the field, and we'll see what it is. It's a personal foul against the Comets. Roughing the passer, I don't quite agree with that call, but it'll move the chains. Um, he was in the he was in the throwing motion there. Nothing really can do if you're on the defensive side of the ball there, but it will move the chains. Second first down given up by penalties in this drive. Yeah, if you're a comma, you just got to start um, once again. Go back to when it's zero zero. Play your fundamentals. Uh, read offensive keys um, and get after it. Hand off to Rodgers. Rodgers breaks a cackle. Rodgers cuts up. Two Rodgers Two tackles. Hey, that was... Got to give credit where credit is due. Breaking that many tackles and making the play, he certainly earned that. Culver cracking that goose egg. Now let's see if they go for two or PAT. I mean, I would think to go for two here. You're down by yeah, 22 points. Nice to get eight back on this one. 
Now, if they go to back down and they score again and they hold the Comets to uh, nothing gained on offense, they're right back in this ball game. So the Comets um, are still in control of this one, but if they score again, you have to start thinking that you're going to start putting the pressure back on. There's that flat route, and they are calling it too short. Yep. A couple yards short there. Great, great tackle by Molenkoff. Well, with 5.42 left in the second, Culver finally gets on the board. Score now, 28-6, Comets. Stay tuned after these words from our sponsors. You're watching Cast and Comets Football here on RTC TV4. County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. In 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. And welcome back. Here's the kickoff after that score. They're going to let and that one go out of bounds. Heads up play there by Yaden. Letting that one go out of the bounds, and they'll take the free yardage. Yeah, especially when the ball was already just barely rolling to the red zone. Mm -hmm, that's one of those plays when a heads up play really doesn't, really doesn't take any movement there. Just knowing the situation, knowing if that ball rolls out, you're going to get some yards on top of that. And uh, this is the fifth offensive drive here by this Commons team? Believe so, and they've scored on four of them. Bolenkoff in the gun here. Excuse me, that was Yaden in the gun. Rigney on the jet sweep. Rigney cutting Ooh. up field. Tackled by a shoelaces. That was a hard earned, like, two yards. Two or three yards, yep. Jack Rogers with that tackle. I, th I think he was just returning some favors. <laughs> Calvin's going with a wider look on offense. Yaden once again back. They time the snap, and that's going to be a neutral zone infraction, but the Commons will pick up yards on top of that. They tried to read the snap, and um, Commons have a decision to make in terms of penalties. Oh, excuse me, illegal shift. I don't think the Commons get a choice to decline that one. <laughs> I thought I read someone in the neutral zone, but... Guess not, so we're going to have a second and one, two, three. Second and 13 here. Comments on their own 32 now. It would be nice if you could decline that penalty, but. <laughs> Trade a timeout. Yeah. Yaden in the Wildcat right up the middle. He's going to keep on churning. Just past the original line of scrimmage. Third and about nine now. I would think to go back to the passing attack here, but you ran it three times and, um, excuse me, four times, and you got a third down upcoming, long third down. I would say to give it to Molenkoff and let him try to find a way to get this up, if possible. Or get it to Yarber and make a hole for him. Yep, Molenkoff comes out of the game, so it will be interesting to see what happens. And a timeout is taken by the Comets. All right, well, while they talk strategy, we'll thank sponsors. You're watching Cast of Commons Football here on RTC TV4. 
Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. After that Comets timeout, the team's taking the field. 4.06 left in the half. Comets still with a commanding 22-point lead. Uh, but this Culver defense going a long way to shut them down on this drive. Yep, we got Yarber back in the Wildcat formation. Expect once again a third run. And it will be. Yaden cuts up field. Whoa, whoa, whoa. he could go all the way. He's, he's gapping. He's going to go back to the end zone. Ladies and gentlemen, Comets putting another six on the board. He made an obvious run play. That was obvious. They were just going to take it right up the middle. Uh, Yarber, frankly, did not care. He was going to power right through that. Explodes right through those linebackers. And who would have thought he would have took it all the way to the house on that one? And amazing the difference that just eight seconds off the clock can make. That's all it took for the Comets to visit the end zone one more time. Yeah, we, we've we seen two drives, two plays um, under 10 seconds amount to, I believe, 14 points. And it's just been a uh, phenomenal offensive showing here. And that one, I believe, was tipped there. Yeah, good block by the Cavaliers. Just under four minutes left on the clock. Uh, Comets will be kicking it off again after these words from our sponsors here on RTC TV4. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Sir, how can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. Oh. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Comets once again with the football in the kicking team. Mollenkoff going to put it in the air or just send it to the 50-yard line and try to cover it up again, one or the other. Mollenkoff to send this one away. Just under four minutes left here in this opening half of Comets football. Short kick returned at around the 27 yard line. Sweep back left. I think that was a good play not putting it in the hands of Rodgers. Yeah, he's just been phenomenal in terms of offense. He's uh, carried some Comets to the end zone we've seen on that, on that touchdown drive. He's been able to pick up first downs and he's been the driving force of this Culver team. Also responsible for some Big tackles on the defensive side of the board, or the ball, excuse me. Oh, we have an injured comet in the backfield. Looks like Kyle Rauderbush. Yep, the senior, he's played phenomenal here tonight. He's limping a little bit. Walking gingerly, but he's walking on some. That's always a good sign. 
Possibly just a little shake, shooken up. He's got a little limp, but I think he'll be okay. taking over on their own 42 yard line. Rogers tries to go up the middle. Officials will blow it dead before anybody gets hurt. Yep, Comet's not having that. Once again, pressuring that defensive line, making a stop. Uh, second and long, not coming here for the Cavs. Heading back to the line as we cross 10 seconds on the play clock. Snap, they're gonna hand it to Rogers. Rogers finds a hole. Clutch tackle there by Gavin Molenkoff. <laughs> Molenkoff lowered into that with, the, it seemed like he was like, this is gonna hurt, but we gotta stop him. As Rogers was about four steps from going all the way to the end zone again. <laughs> Absolutely, he's been the driving force of this Culver's of Culver's offense, and once again, big run there. We've seen it tonight, but the comments able to hold him um, to get him out of the end zone. Drawbacks to throw. There's that flat route I was talking about earlier, and caught by Martin. at his toes. Good tackle there. Levi Martin was all over that one. Gain is picked up, but a great tackle there by Martin. We've seen him as the aggressor um, earlier this season on this um, on this Comets defense. He's been that guy seemingly first there on defense, making the tackles. Um, he's played great all year, and um, it's great to see Comets leading this one just with all the work he's put in this season. Absolutely. Two-minute warning now. Drops back for the pass. Pass is complete. There's another curl route, and a first down's picked up. Those are the two routes we've seen just work so well for this Culver offense. They haven't ran it much, but when they do, they've seen they've seen successful games. They've seen seven seven yard, eight yard completions, first downs being made. You might want to keep on going back to that. Yeah, they've got the ball up to the Comets 27. Ninety seconds left in the half. And hand it to Rogers. Comets defense reads that, stops him in his tracks. Big shove there. Glad they didn't call that an unnecessary roughness. Noah heard with that shove. Yeah, if Comets fortunate to walk away without a <clears throat> yellow flag on the field there, but uh, great stop there by the defense. And Culver going to use another timeout as we get to 80 seconds left in the half. We're going to step away. We're going to thank our sponsors, and you're going to come back and watch the conclusion of the half here on RTC TV4. Weather is just around the corner. That means spring sports, enjoying community parks, and playing pickleball at the new courts. Over the last year, grants from the Fulton County Community Foundation supported area parks, outdoor recreation, and local youth sports. Learn more about how the foundation is making a difference in your community by visiting NICF.org or calling 574-224-3223. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Culver second and 12 on the Comets 29 yard line. Josh back to throw, Comet pressure, a laser, and it's intercepted. There's a big pick by the Comets. Grant 
Yaden, he's been phenomenal. Big time plays and a big time interception. That one was a laser toward the receiver. Tipped up. Grant Yaden makes a phenomenal play on the ball. This Comets team, they've been they've been pedaled to the metal on both sides of the ball. They've been playing with confidence that we haven't really seen all this season. Um, and they've been getting the job done on both sides of the ball. They've been playing aggressive. They've been playing smart. They've been making reads on both sides of the ball. And once again, Comets on offense. Molenkoff a handoff. That's Yarber. Lowers his shoulder and picks up as much as he can. That's going to be around four yards. There's another one. He was probably just a half a step away from at least moving the chains, if not going all the way down to the end zone. Yeah, trying to spin off of that body there, but just wrapped up a bit shy. Two runs of the play clock before the half is over. Outside handoff, cuts back. Inside is Yarber. And I think he, he's going to make it first down Comets. Just moving those chains. That was hard fought yardage too. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the experience, that's experience that you're going to pick up the more you play is um, if you're going with an outside run, you got to know when to decide to, okay, I got to, I got to cut back and try to go up the middle and try to get as much yards as I can. If Yarber would have tried to keep going towards the outside, we probably possibly would have saw a loss, but he, he read that hole right. He cuts up um, midfield. He's able to pick up a first down. Snap right at the one count. One calf, quarterback keeper. And that will end the half. Huge half for the Comets, 34 to six. Can't wait to see what the second half brings for us. Uh, but before that, we're going to have halftime festivities here for homecoming. So stay tuned as we're going to take you to the field, Mike. And this is Cast of Comets Football here on RTC TV 4. Freshman Madison 
Douglas and Gage Veneer. Madison is the daughter of Josh and Tiffany at the 12 mile area. Madison is a member of the volleyball, basketball, and softball teams. Madison is also active in FFA, Keep Club, and SAC. After graduation, Madison will attend college. She is not decided on college, but knows it will not be IU. Gage is the son of Dwayne and Kayla of the 12 mile area. Gabe is a member of the football and wrestling team. After high school, Gabe would like to attend Trine University to wrestle. Freshman Madison Douglas and Gabe Veneer. <laughs> Sophomores Savannah Moss and Joe Fagan. Savannah is the daughter of Wade and Deborah of the Rochester area. Savannah is active in FCCLA. Savannah's future plans are to attend Grace College and study ministry and leadership. Savannah would like to become a pastor. Joe is the son of John Fagan and Marsha Fagan of the Kiwana area. Joe will attend trade school to become an electrician. Sophomores Savannah Moss and Joe Fagan. Juniors are Shaylee Yaden and Max Summers. Shaylee is the daughter of Seth and Amber Boyer and Luke and Amber Yaden of the 12 Mile area. Shaylee is a varsity cheerleader and a member of the volleyball team. Shaylee is also active in FCCLA and Key Club. After graduation, Shaylee will attend Cosmetology School. Max is the son of Nick Summers and Krista Summers of the Grass Creek area. Max is a member of the cross country basketball and golf teams. He is also active in FFA, FCCLA, National Honor Society, and the Athletic Leadership Committee. Max will attend Purdue University and study something related to agriculture. Shaylee Yaden and Max Summers. <laughs> Olivia Thomas and Noah Bird. Olivia is the daughter of Brent and Olivia of the 12, or Elizabeth of the 12 mile area. Olivia is a member of the basketball team. She is also active in FFA, Key Club, FCCLA, 4-H, SAC, National Honor Society, and the Athletic Leadership Committee and the REMC Student Board. Olivia will attend Purdue University and major in pharmacy. Noah is the son of Jason and Stephanie of the Kiwana area. Noah is a member of the football and baseball teams. Noah is also active in FFA. Noah is undecided about his future plans. Juniors, Olivia Thomas and Noah Hurd. <laughs> Seniors, Macy Henderleiter and Courtney Smith. Macy is the daughter of Brock and Leah of the Kiwana area. Macy is a member of the volleyball, basketball, and softball teams. She is also active in FCCLA, FFA, Key Club, National Honor Society, SAC, and 4-H. Macy will attend Purdue University and study speech pathology. Corbin is the son of Troy and Marsha of the Fulton area. Corbin is a member of the basketball and track teams. He is also active in National Honor Society, SCCLA, and a member of the Student Advisory Council. Corbin will attend Purdue University and major in business analytics. Macy Hunterleiter and Corbin Smith. <laughs> Alexa Pinky and Talon Zider. <laughs> Alexa is the daughter of Matt and Ramel in the Kiwana area. Alexa is a member of the volleyball, gymnastics, and softball teams. Alexa is also active in FFA, FCCLA, Key Club, 4-H, SAC, NHS, and the REMC Junior Board. Alexa plans to attend Purdue University and study pharmacy. Talon is the son of Jason and Summer of the Fulton area. Talon is a member of the basketball and baseball teams. Talon is active in FFA, National Honor Society, FCCLA, and the Student Advisory Council. Talon will attend trade school to become an electrician. Alexa Pinky and Talon Zider. Grant Yates. 
Madison is the daughter of Greg and Camille of the Fort Fulton area. She is a member of the volleyball, basketball, and softball team. Madison is also active in NHS, SAC, Key Club, FCCLA, and the Athletic Leadership Council. Madison will be attending Purdue Fort Wayne in the fall where she will play softball and study business and marketing. Grant is the son of Amber and Seth Boyer and Luke and Amber Yates of the 12 Mile area. Grant is a member of the football, basketball, and baseball teams. Grant, Grant's future plans are undecided. Addison Zippelman and Grant Yates. At this time, last year's homecoming king, or king Evan Howard, will crown our homecoming king and queen. This year's homecoming 2023 king is Corbin Smith. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. Oh. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Looking for a way to show off your students' art talents? Enter them in for Fulton County REMC's 2025 Cooperative Calendar of Student Art Contest. Any student from grades K through 12 can enter with an unlimited amount of submissions. Artwork can be submitted by parents, teachers, youth leaders, or other groups as a class project. Students do not have to be consumers of a rural electric cooperative. To learn more, visit www.fcremc.coop youth or call at 574-223-3156. The Winning Edge is your go-to spot for all your customized school-related needs. We feature a variety of services such as screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving. From custom jerseys and sports equipment to school-specific spirit wear, the Winning Edge can set you and your fans up with an online one-stop shop edge store to take care of all your needs. Call today at 574-223-6090 or visit their website at thewinningedgeathletics.com. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. Woodlawn with my third pregnancy um, 
My other two pregnancies, I had been elsewhere, and coming here was a completely different experience. I truly never felt cared for before, and from the moment I had my first OB appointment, I knew it was going to be different. Um, he really cared. The nurses really cared. Um, everyone just really cared about my baby, me, making me comfortable. It was great. Are you wanting to open up a checking account, savings account, or a CD, but you simply just don't want to make a trip to the bank? Well, I have some good news for you. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can open up a Simply Free checking account, savings account, or CD online from the convenience of your own home. Opening up a new account has never been so quick and easy. Get started today at firstfederalbanking.com. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Comets are teeing up, are teeing up to kick off to start the second half. <clears throat> An absolute hammer hit by Levi Martin to start the second half of the Comets football. Big stop there at Culver's 35 yard line. So here we go. First offensive drive for Culver after they had time to talk it over at the break. And we got a pitch play to Rogers. He's getting out wide. There's a go. flag. I thought I saw a hold in the backfield. Yep, I do believe this one's gonna get called back. They can celebrate for the moment, but where this one's gonna. I, I can't Ooh. imagine that not getting called back because I saw I saw that hold from up here mm -hmm. 70 yards away. Oh, chop block against the Cavaliers. Either way, getting called back. And uh, we can definitely empathize with the Culver fans. We've seen a couple of big runs called back this season. Uh-huh. A couple on opening kickoffs. We've seemingly had it Ryan all the way back inside our red zone. And uh, they get called back. It's it's never something you want to see, especially getting such an explosive play and having to try to dial up another one on the same drive. It's it's just deflating. We've seen it happen. It's, it's tough to watch, but it's part of the game. And that was a 15-yard penalty gauge. First and 25. That one's tipped. Ooh. That was Petrie Deval, the senior, seemingly the leader of this Comets um, team. Got a lot of experience underneath his belt. It's a shame he couldn't get under that and just kind of jog it in. Yeah. <clears throat> I've seen it happen at the at the college level. Those guys tip it up and they're able to take it back. But uh, just a great heads up play to even get that one in the air. And that one. Slant route is incomplete. Yep, tried the slant up towards the outside of the field. Just overthrew him there. We're going to have a third and long. Very long here. Yeah, that's third, third, third in a cross country course. Third and a quarter of the football field. Actually, third and <clears throat> 25 upcoming. Now, that said, we've seen especially uh, uh, Jack Rogers make some big plays. And we've seen a big pass play for, from the uh, Cavaliers. So I certainly wouldn't count them out on this drive. And we got a hierarching pass. It's a two on one. That one's just overshot around six or seven yards. That, that was a good play call. I had the guy, but those passes out towards the sideline are just so difficult to throw in and bring down. Looks like they might kick this one away. Yeah, that's awful deep into their own territory to risk turning over on downs. Yep, and we got Jabez Yarber who's just been sensational tonight. Gonna return this kick. They're gonna have to grease the door frames of his house. That, one's, so that one's blocked and picked up. That one's bobbled, excuse me. <laughs> and it's eventually labeled dead. That might have been <clears throat> Levi Martin who could have possibly tucked that one all the way to the end zone, but I think the jitters got him there, but nonetheless, Terrific defensive play there by the Comets. Regardless, Comets taking over first and goal. Yep. 
a lot of these punters, when you got three or four guys rushing at you from all angles, uh, it's, it's tough to get them off. You got to get them off quick. And Collins have had one block too. It's just about getting your feet set and trying to get rid of it as quick as possible. Gavin Molenkoff hands it off to Jabez Yarber. Goes up the middle, gets stopped with a gain. Gain of six there. Second and goal. I think, I can't tell if six was yards to go or. Excuse me, yep, yards to go there, gain of four. It's just real difficult to see where that possession positioning is clear across the field that far. Yeah, we're more on the right side of the field. We can see everything fine from around the opposite 40-yard line, but over there it's <clears> pretty <throat> difficult to make them. Molenkoff again from the from the gun here. Expect another run, and it is inside handoff yard where he's going to cut back, but that's just blown up there. That's a great defensive effort by the tackle in the end there for Culver. Yarber, yeah, his, his blocker got held up in front of him. He tried to shove him forward, couldn't make it happen. It would certainly be a shame to turn over on downs this close to the this close to the goal line. Yeah, and this, this is an interesting down here for the Comets because you got so many options. You can try to run it in. You can try to throw a short route, and if you don't kick it, you can possibly try a field goal attempt. There's just so many options here for this offense. Molenkoff back to throw. No option, cuts it back. Did he make it? He reached out, but I think his knee's gonna be down just short. You could see Molonkov going through his progression reads. He tried to look for the flat, not there. Look for the other one, not there, and just decides he has to, he has to pull it down to run with it, try to get as much as he can. Fourth and inches to that goal line. Yep, and I would say possibly just give it to Grant Yaden here, and they will, they're coming out. Um, excuse me, it's going to be Molenkoff. Expect a run here by Yarber, and it is. He's going to cut up the field. He's going to dive for it. Can the Comets push him in? And it's going to be a turnover on downs right at the goal line. And I feel like, at the risk of sounding ignorant, Gage, I think that that is the youth and the inexperience of this Comets line. When Yarber got stopped up, that entire offensive line should have been at his back pushing him. Um, we've seen that in the past with previous more mature offensive lines. And um, they were all doing their best to block, but unfortunately there were enough defenders there jamming up Yarb uh, Yarber's forward progression. Uh, and a more mature line would have, I think, shoved him in and put six more on the board. Yeah, and we'll see a couple other teams. They'll go in a diamond look, which means you got um, a runner on the right and left side of the quarterback and another one behind the quarterback. So the offensive line uh, charges forward, and they try to carry the quarterback to the end zone. But um, they go from the gun there, and just nothing to be found. Comets Back looking for a safety. That one's going to be a, a safety. Safety there by the Comets, what? Well, How about that? <laughs> if you can't get the six, at least get the safety, right? I guess so. There's a flag, extremely late flag. There on the play. Right at the Culver, right at the group of Culver players, and we'll see what that is. I'm interested to see what this might be. There's tons of possibilities for this one. With it being that late, it could be unsportsmanlike. Yep, and it will be unsportsmanlike conduct on the Cavs. <clears throat> Not a lot of motion there. Possibly could have been some words exchanged. So, um, so that will be assessed on the kickoff return placement, correct? I, I do believe so. So what they'll do is... They'll spot the ball a little bit farther back, I do believe, and then they're. Or do go ahead or do they away. kick from further forward? Uh, I do believe they're going to kick from farther back. Okay.
but it will. I do believe it will be a punt here because the safety was converted. So you're pretty much playing with half of the football field here on this punt off, you could say. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've seen a safety in a sportsmanlike conduct on the same play. <laughs> I can safely say I've never seen it. Lots of digest here. When I think part of what we're seeing here now is this Culver team getting frustrated. Um, and then as you get frustrated, mistakes start mounting. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen it happen. Kasson had some nights like those when things just seemingly just don't go your way. Um, great punt there, excuse me, uh, by Culver. But we've seen it happen with Kasson. Things just don't go your way. But you just got to keep on pushing because at the end of the day, you're still going to have um, just over, just under two quarters of the play. And right now, I feel like if you're Culver, you're just trying to um, – Find some answers possibly for next week. What what worked in this game? What didn't work in this game? What do we need to improve going forward to next game or to next season? Um, what are the positives? Because in every loss, there is inevitably going to be something, okay, I did this right. What can we build off of going into next week? And I feel like Culver, that's just, that's just the number one priority right now. Absolutely. Of course, I mean, on the other hand, it's a four-possession game. You know, if... if the Comets could, I don't want to see it, but they could unravel, get overconfident. Um, but thus far tonight, they have earned that confidence. There's a ball out, but forward progress was stopped, so Arbor gets off the leash there with that one. But, yeah, we've, we've definitely seen games. Seemingly, we've had a team that's been way out in front, and um, – they can get sloppy. The game's not over until the finer buzzer is sounded. That's what coaches say, and that's how it inevitably plays out. So if you're the Comets, you gotta you got to keep going 110%. The game is not over. Um, we still got just under um, two quarters left to play, and uh, you got to keep going. Flag in the backfield. This might be an illegal shift. Not much found there, just two yards there by Rigney. Rigney's had a couple of plays like that where he has, he himself has covered a lot of yardage, but we've had very little forward momentum. Yep, absolutely. That's he, as a freshman, you got you got to know when to cut up the field. There's going to be times when you can try to explode around somebody, but um, at the same time, the end goal is try to get up as much positive yards as possible. Um, just try to hold out there a little bit too long and wrapped up for a short gain. But we've seen him have explos uh, explosional plays tonight. That's going to be a false start on the Comets. But we've seen him have explosive plays that run. Going back to, I believe that was the first quarter. It's he He's had an up and down night, but it's going to happen, especially as a young guy coming into a brand new program. The game's a lot more sped up, and you just got to learn to cope with it. Got to learn from it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Culver did decline that penalty. Uh, Comments now third and nine from their own 39-yard line. Yep, and the logic behind that is taking the down instead of the distance. And Grant Yaden, how about that pass by Molenkoff? Under pressure, didn't matter, lobbed it right in there. And once again, uh, flags down on the play in the backfield. Possibly a roughing call. I don't know what else this possibly could be. Unless there was a hold that we didn't see. Yeah, that, that is at all possible, especially when your quarterback's getting pressured as much as Molenkoff did on that one. Looks like it is going to be roughing the passer because they're already marching this one off. That's our second roughing the passer penalty this game. One on both sides. Good call. That's a long way for the chain gang to march that one. Yep, and that's one of those penalties when it can be called different. In, in all different games. You can have times when um, a quarterback just seemingly gets touched after he's thrown the ball and the flag gets gets thrown. But we've had times when quarterbacks get just completely hit-sticked after a play, but the flag isn't thrown. It's one of those plays when it's more about the tempo of the game. How are each team's playing against each other? They're playing more aggressive or they're laying back. Uh, the refs, um, they're, they're, not, they're not afraid to call that one. We've seen it happen twice already, and the comments have another first down. We got a double handoff sweep to Rigney up the field, cutting back. Rigney takes he's it all the way. He's got distance, and he's in. 
I believe that's Rigney's first career touchdown. That double handoff, thing of beauty. And, that's and by my math, that puts us at 36. 36-point uh, lead for the Comets. We will now go running clock for the remainder of the half, or the remainder of the game, excuse me. And that's one of the things that we don't really see a lot, a lot with this Comets offense is the creativity. We don't see a lot of double handoffs. We don't see a lot of trickeration, as Molenkov put that right down the hatch there. But this Comets offense isn't really particularly known for being flashy, but we've seen it time and time again. Big plays, double handoffs. We've seen it all this game. Absolutely. We had that uh, onside kick early in the game. Uh, so look forward to seeing what other creativity they come up with as we come back from this ad break. Stay tuned. You're watching Cast and Comets football here from a big homecoming night at the Comet Crater on RTC TV 4. Friskins Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Criskins is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit CriskinsPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Criskins can help you. DC Fiber Communications knows that having fast, reliable internet is integral to your home or business. That's why we are striving to be your local provider for all your internet needs. Right now, we are working on expanding our reach to be readily available for you. To see where we are at, scan the QR code now and see if fiber is available in your area. Or if you want to know more about our services, check us out online at www.rtc1.com. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Comets once again teeing off to send the ball away to the Cavaliers. Molenkoff sends it away. Low arcing kick here. That oh. one's hit off the shoe. Can the Comets fall on it? This ball's fumbling. The Comets already pointing. They believe they have it. And they have it. Wow. What a huge night for these Comets. Huge homecoming night. Uh, a lot of firsts here this evening. Uh, once again, this is the first time, I believe, I believe, uh, I'm sure that somebody will text me if I'm wrong. It might even be Mr. Valti himself. Uh, but this is the first time that the Comets have been on the advantage side of a running clock in football since that rule came into play, uh, I believe it was two seasons ago. Uh, we've seen it to our advantage in basketball several times, but I believe this is the first time in football. Yeah, Cass, it definitely has a rich history in terms of basketball, but football, they've just been putting on a phenomenal performance did, tonight. Did Routabush move the chains? I do believe so. He's, That's always a good sign seeing him back in the game after taking that hit. It's going to be a close thing if not. Oh, second and inches. I'll tell you what, Gage, th these Comets are going to be flying high all week long next week. Such a big night for the Comets tacklers. And that should have been enough. They got forward momentum, and there's the chains moving. Yep, especially on second inches. You got pretty much the entire playbook at your disposal if you want to try a shot at the end zone. Even though the comments didn't really need it, you could have tried it, but they just decided to run it right up the middle, pick it up, and keep on moving those chains. Oh, Yarber found a hole. Yarber the ball carrier. Tackle by number 12, Jack Rogers. Looks like he got about five on that one. <clears throat> no, 
And Comets once again inside the Cavaliers red zone. Molenkoff under center. We've seen that plenty of times tonight. In motion. Wide handoff. That's Rigney again. Rigney. Oh, that's a light hit. Where's the flag on that one? <laughs> the entire Comet stand just said the same thing. I'm honestly kind of appalled. Nothing was thrown there. Rigney obviously up. Everybody, everybody knew the play was over. Just a late hit there. Fortunate for Culver that was not that was not thrown there. Third and five, ball on the Culver 18 yard line. There you go, Chase Angett, who was a starting runner back at the start of the season. He's gonna pick up a couple yards. Yep, Chase Inge, he was the primary running back at the start of this Comets season, but we've seen now Comets uh, relying more on Jabez Yarber and really just a whole group of guys, uh, Chase included. We've seen Landon Rigney run it. We've seen Kyle Routabush run it. We've seen basically anyone who has legs and can charge <laughs> forward run the ball. Absolutely. Grant Yaden, uh, even Molenkoff has put, gotten his fair share of positive yards. Speaking yardage. of Grant Yaden, that's and a he's touchdown. in the end zone again. Comets put on an offensive showing of the ages here at the Comet Crater tonight. Perfect weather, perfect football. Uh, there's a perfect drive there for the Comets. One score away from breaking the 50 point margin. They're gonna go for one here. Try to make it an even 5-0. I wanna say the last time that the Comets saw a half century on the scoreboard was two or three seasons ago. That one is wide. Oh, yeah, wide. That one's no good. Um, Comets saw a half century on the scoreboard. I believe it was three seasons ago. Uh, I was on the call with Hunter Shane Lubb, who's now a member of the Comets coaching staff. Um, and prior to that, it had been, I believe, 19 years. So huge night, huge night uh, for the Comets. Is if they can get just one more point on the board uh, in the next 14 minutes of play, uh, they'll, they'll do something that's only happened one other time in about two decades. So absolutely great accomplishments uh, being provided here by the Comets, especially after taking all those tough losses against extremely good teams. Um, it's always nice to bounce back with a dominant performance here tonight. Just outside of the two-minute warning here in the third quarter. Molenkoff teed up to kick again. Up, up, and away. That one's a pretty short kick there, muffed, but retained. Comets bring him down. Just outside the 40-yard line. I believe they might be on the 35. Always reserve the right to be wrong. The angle we're looking at this at the field from, things get a little wonky. <laughs> got some, got some subs here for the Comets. A lot of freshmen coming in. Ashton Boyer, uh, making his second appearance on defense tonight, I believe. Gage Manier and Cameron McFatridge back in the game. There's Rogers. Shoved out of bounds. We're going to flag. I believe that's going to be a hold against the Comets. Yeah, 
That's going to be on the Culver Cavs, I believe. Oh, block to the back. I do believe that was further down at, at the line to gain there. Um, there was a little pushing and shoving, and I'm not sure who it was. I think it might have been Ashton Boyer who got a little push to the back and was brought to the ground. Yeah, just with the position of the flag on the field, I thought it was against the Comets. Again, a lot of frustration now on the Culver side of the football uh, as tonight really hasn't gone their way very often. Um, and that frustration is going to start coming out in the play. And uh, as the game clock winds down, we're 15 seconds left here in the third quarter. Yep, one more play here. Run up the middle. Breaks a couple tackles. Once again, Rodgers has been a big ball mover for the Cavaliers here tonight. And that will wrap up the third quarter. We're going to step away. We're going to thank our sponsors coming back for fourth quarter action here in just a minute on RTC TV4. He'll fire his three. Good afternoon, ma'am. It looks like you're having a fart bubble. Excuse me? It looks like you're having car trouble, and I think you should give our friends at Affordable Hearing a call. Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Team's getting ready to take the field to start this fourth quarter. Cavaliers on their second down of this drive. And 12 minutes of football with a running clock to play. You have a lot of young guys in here on the defensive side of the ball for casting. Letting their older guys get a break and we got a lot of freshmen out here getting a couple of their first moments here tonight. Flat route, we've seen that a couple times. Gage Nair, we've seen him a couple times and uh, first down's picked up. That was a bit of a size mismatch there and props to Gage for being able to shift the momentum, get the uh, carrier out of bounds and uh, stop that forward momentum. Yeah, he may be small, but he knows how to tackle and get guys out of bounds, and we see it there. I think that matchup in the middle of the field might not have gone his way, though. <laughs> Absolutely. First downs are not something you want to get up often. There's Rodgers brought down. Pressure by Levi Martin. Brody Brewer is there on the play as well. Second and 14 for the Cavaliers now on their own 46 yard line. Drops back to pass, has time in the pocket. That's it's a, long. That's intercepted. intercepted. Jabez Yarber making his way up the field. He's got blockers. Jabez Yarber, big hit there by Martin. Stays in bounds and gets tripped up at the Culver 28-yard line. What a huge play. He's made plays all over the field. Offense, defense, special teams, and he adds another one to his highlight reel for tonight. Gage, he picked up an extra seven yards just by paying attention, being cognizant 
of where the sideline was, keeping that foot inside and juking back in half a step so that he didn't step out. What an incredible play there by Jabez Yarber. Once again, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Yarber, we're going to have to spring for a bucket of, uh, of butter so that he can get his head through the doorways after tonight. Uh, but we can't help but talk him up. He's had a huge night. Yeah, he's been kind of the the big centerpiece of this Comets this Comets football team really here tonight. He's he's made plays left and right. He scored a couple touchdowns. He was the first one to break the ice on the offensive side of the ball, and um, he just played quite honestly just phenomenal. One truly one of the best performances I've seen this season by any by any Comet player. And Comet's going to take a timeout here. 9.08 left on the clock here tonight. We're going to step away and thank our sponsors. You're watching Cast and Comets Football here on RTC TV4. Outlet Youth Center is faith-based, youth-driven, community-minded, and strives to provide a safe, structured environment for all Fulton County youth. The Outlet Youth Center strives to encourage youth to make positive life choices that not only affects their lives, but also their community. To learn more, visit www.theoutletyouthcenter.org, call 574-223-5437, or visit us at 491 Apache Drive, Rochester. Did you know First Federal Savings Bank now offers a 12-month construction loan program? This program will allow customers to have an extended two months build time to help aid in labor and supply shortages. Let First Federal Savings Bank help you build your dream home by contacting one of our experienced mortgage loan originators today for more details. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Teams back out on the field after that Comets timeout. Chase Angit. He's going to get stopped get and pushed met. backwards. Number 44, Chase Angit, the ball carrier. Tackled by number 42, Ethan Bingham. So just under nine minutes remaining in this game. Comets commanding lead. Comets now second and eight on the 29-yard line. That's a pitch to Meneer, the cornerback, and he's Ooh. brought down. Couldn't get any ground there. Had some promising moments there on that pitch, but exploding out of the, the left linebacker spot, able to make that tackle. He had a lot of speed, just. Yep, that's one of those moments when Got to read it, no one to cut up field, try to get as much as you can. Because at the end of the day, you can't outrun everyone. There's only one fastest person on the field. But um, that was another one of those pr creative play calls we've been talking about. Yeah, stuff we haven't seen, and, and right now is the time for it. Yep, Collins just put on an offensive clinic, you could say, and Yarber spins out of that one. I was to say, that's something we have seen. Ball in the hands of Jabez Yarber here tonight. Lots of positive yardage, not quite enough to move the chains, but definitely enough to put them into striking distance. Looks like fourth and two. Yeah, I would expect another outside handoff here. Ball just outside the Culver red zone. In comes Landon Rigney, so you can expect a sweep or a pitch here. Rigney's in motion. It's a handoff to Angit. And he gets spun down and should be enough to move it. Yep, by a couple of yards. He had a first time appearance here, stepping onto the field. Tommy Loving coming in for his first offensive play. See Gage Manier back out there. Unless he's just running the play out. Nope, oh, he is subbing in for Landon Rigney. Comets in the same offensive position they were originally. 
in motion. That's Yarber on the sweep. Yarber cutting up field. Finds a hole, makes Make another one, brought down. Not quite enough to move the chains. He might make it though. They're they're pointing forward. I think it might be a little bit short though. Um, I think they're all trying to figure out what's going on. No, that football is inside of the chains. You're absolutely right. Yep. So here we go. Another first and goal. Uh, down series here for the Comets. Gage Veneer on the sweep. We've seen this before. Cuts Can't. back inside, but nothing found. Stopped at the line. Second and goal. We're inside of half the halfway mark. And Luke Hipshire getting his first offensive snaps. Luke Hipshire, he's a... He's a freshman, one of my one of my best friends. And he's he's been out there working his tail off every day on the football field, and it's always nice to see him get some playing time. Spent a lot of time in the weight room this summer. Uh, and a big man on the wrestling squad too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, don't doubt that kid's short frame, because he can he can lift a couple pounds. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, Timeout comments. Yeah, possibly just trying to figure some things out offensively, make sure everyone's on the same page. Well, while they're talking strategy, we're thanking sponsors. Come back for the conclusion here tonight on RTC TV4. Are you looking to switch banks? First Federal Savings Bank offers a wide variety of products and services for their customers, such as simply free checking, mortgage lending, commercial lending, financial services through LPL Financial, and insurance services through First Federal Insurance Services. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That strategy session just wrapping up. See what Coach Ulrich's put together for him. Second and goal here from the nine. Outside handoff. Unable to see who got that carry. I believe that's Lane and Rigney. No, number 10. Excuse that's me, Ashton, Ashton Boyer. Boyer. Another freshman coming into the program for their first year, Ashton Boyer. Um, he's usually known for his defensive uh, beside the ball playing the safety position, but he gets the ball there. Sadly, uh, nowhere to go forward there, and they're going to lose a couple yards there, but still got an extra down. Third and goal, 11 to go. Boyer's another one who can really put up some weight in the weight room. Yeah, absolutely. He's another one that can just lift. <laughs> Ball in the hands of number 44, Chase Angot. He makes some positive yardage before being stopped by a whole host of Cavaliers. Now, I would, I would assume the Comets would go for this. Yeah, there's nothing to lose by going for it. Yeah, absolutely. You either turn over, clear back and on the base on, or on the goal line and and look at a possible another safety opportunity. You get it in. You've just got nothing to gain by. One cough right up the gun. I thought he about got that one, but he's going to be marked down around the one. Was not expecting a QB sneak seven yards out, but uh, almost picks it up. Again, the last time that Culver was in this kind of field position, they gave up points to the Comets. Comments have another chance at a safety here. See if they can break this half century mark. I feel like that would just be the icy on the cake to break 50. Absolutely. And Cavaliers will use a timeout here. 
Once again, we'll be back in a few moments. You're watching Cast and Comets Football here on RTC TV4. Sitters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Pace Setters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Cavaliers breaking out of their huddle. Two and a half minutes to play here tonight. Comets looking to get a tackle on the backfield here, put two more on the board. They're gonna hand it off. Number 12, Rogers the ball carrier. Tackle by number 15. And there's Luke Hipsher with that stop on uh, number 12, Jack Rogers. Again, Jack Rogers has been the predominant force uh, for the uh, Cavaliers here tonight. In fact, he was the ball carrier to put those six points that they've got on the board. So congratulations there to the freshman, Luke Hipsher, on stopping Rogers. Yep, the man, the myth, the legend, Luke Hipsher. <laughs> There's no bias at all on this broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely zero bias. Oh, big run here for the Cavs. He's going down the sideline. Clutch tackle there by, um, I believe that was Martin, if I read correctly. Big gain of yards there. Excuse me, that was uh, Lance Hanna there with that tackle. I'm just so seeing Levi Martin chase down these guys after they pick up runs. I just, I just assume he made the tackle, but shout out to, to Lance Hanna right there making the big stop for the Comets. Cavaliers obviously wanting to chip into this deficit a little bit as we cross the 60 second mark here tonight. There's the handoff. He's gonna be met in the backfield. And we got a Cavalier down on the field. That's never a good sign under a minute to play. Trying to get up under his own power. And Sean Green is holding his knee. That's certainly not a good sign. Confident in saying that this knee injury not quite as bad as what happened in the uh, Cleveland Browns game <laughs> last week. Yeah, poor Nick Chubb. <laughs> that was that that was brutal. That was brutal. But um, our prayers are with Sean Green. Hopefully, he can get up yeah. under his own power. Yeah. Hopefully, he was holding around the knee for a calf cramp and not holding around the knee for a knee injury. Oh. Looks like they're going to help him up. He's going to be okay. Mm, he is definitely being supported off the field. Yeah, this is... You never want to see anybody get injured, but in, with a with a spread like this on the board, under a minute left to play, any injury is kind of a waste at this point. Um, obviously, you still want to see people go hard. You still want to see a good effort out there, um, but it's just not worth it's not worth an injury at this point, is what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's any possible outcome that could change this game and. At this point, you might just want to be looking at a couple kneel a couple kneel downs after uh, Mr. Green walked off pretty gingerly after that one. Second and nine. They're still be handing it off. They're, they're still looking to run it. He's gapping. 
And he is going to put six on the board. That's uh, Tony Summers carrying that ball. And again, he was the one who uh, made that big play just a little while ago. Clock's still running. They might just let this one play out. Not much reason taking a two-point conversion or PAT. So they might nope. try to get it off. You got five seconds. There's a snap. Yep. And he made it. So they punch it in for two at the last second, but at the end of the day, it doesn't change much on the scoreboard, and the Comets will get their first win. In two seasons. In two seasons with a dominant performance, almost scoring a half century of points. It was an all-around effort by this Comets squad, Jabez Jarber being... Uh, the main contributor of, on both sides of the ball. Had a couple touchdowns, a couple interceptions. Gavin Molenkoff, Grant Yaden played outstanding. Absolutely. Not to mention some big plays here tonight by seniors Kyle Routabush, uh, Pete Duvall, and Levi Martin. Uh, just a fantastic night of football for the Comets. And uh, winning a homecoming is always a good feeling. So congratulations to this Comet team. Um, definitely you deserve the, the high and the buzz that you're feeling right now. Uh, so enjoy it, guys. And uh, we can't wait to broadcast your next one. Uh, once again, your final score here tonight, Caston 49, Culver 14. Uh, of course, we have uh, a few different Culver, or Culver, no, Caston Conference competitions tomorrow. Uh, including the cross country team. Uh, I know junior high volleyball has a uh, conference tournament tomorrow, and uh, I'm sure I'm leaving people out. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, we're going to wrap it up uh, for RTC TV4. I'm Blair Zimmerman. And I'm Gage Thomas. And congratulations, comments. Good night. <laughs>